Hey there, Power Platform enthusiasts. Stefan Superfloof here. Welcome back. Today we're going to cover part two of our CapEx step-by-step build-out. Now in part one, we covered how to create the gallery you see here and how to do custom filters that would work with your data and give us multiple choices when we're looking at customizing the filters options. I also, if you look at a short that I created, added in a filter by requester where I take the distinct of all the people pickers and allow us to sort by that as well. So go make sure you look those up. Today we're going to cover the new request. When you hit the new request, we're going to leverage modern buttons. And this is a modern form with modern tabs. And I'm going to cover some of the gotchas that you're going to want to look out for in the modern experience. It's not at the time of this recording, 100% ready for prime time. Now make sure you hit subscribe so you are notified of the next parts of our video where we're going to cover more of the back end. If we go and look at one of these, our CapEx app in the modern tab, we have a expense detail section with a grid-like experience, the attachments which we've already covered, and the approval workflow. So let's get started today on building out this form. Here we are on the main screen of the app. Now, as we go into the back end, you'll notice that things don't look quite right. This app was never intended to be viewed on a mobile device or an iPad. It was always intended to be for finance and on desktop computers. So you'll see that things run off the screen and that's okay. When you're doing requirements gathering though, the first thing that you always wanna ask, is this going to be used on a mobile device? And you wanna design your app Accordingly. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see this in a mobile design or a mobile responsive design. It's really easy to take this from what we have here into a mobile design because I've leveraged containers. Let me know in the comments if you want me to cover that. But for today, what we're going to look at is our new request button over here and the new request form. So if I click OK, you can't see the button up here, but that's all right. Because I know that in this header container, we have the button new. Now this is a modern button. And again, at the time of this recording, more of the modern controls are being made prime time. And I'll show you one of those here with a date picker in a minute, but just be cautious. And if you see weirdness, you may have to roll back to the classic designs. So why I love modern buttons, and I'm actually just going to hide a couple of these so we can see it on the screen and select another one and make it not visible and select one more and make it not visible. There we go. So here we have an icon built into the button, which is really handy. We used to have to use containers and do all sorts of calculations. Not anymore. We have the text for the button and then we have an icon. We could have the icon before, we could have the icon after, and these are all really nice icons. You can look at all the options we have. There's tons of them. You still can use the classic ones if you like, the classic button and then add icons to it, but this is just so much easier, right? I'm a lazy IT person. I don't want to work too hard. So if we look at the on select for this button, we are setting the var form mode. I'm leveraging a variable to set the mode of my form because I use that form in the front end as well as the back end. I don't want to recreate forms. Let's just use it once. Let's make it once and use it all over the place. So we're setting the var form mode. That's my vernacular, use whatever you like, to new. We're navigating to the next screen with a cover transition of right, and we're resetting the form. I like to do that just to make sure we get a fresh feel on the form. So I'm gonna hit the Alt key on my keyboard and go and look at the new form. We're leveraging a responsive container here, a responsive screen here. And up here in the header, I have the modern tab list. I've used this all over the place in apps recently. It's just, I love the look of it. I love the functionality of it. And you can see here in the item property, I'm leveraging my form mode to give me the variables or the options, the items that I want in the tab. If this is a var form mode of edits, so if I hit cancel on the button and we go into the back end, you'll see all four of these tabs are showing up. That's because the var form mode is in edit mode. We have request details, expense details, attachments, and approvals. If it's not in an edit mode, then we just get request details. Now, if I hit cancel, we go home, we're gonna create a new request. You see how dynamically we're using one control to do everything we need in the app. So much easier. Now here we have two more modern buttons. 
If we hit the cancel button, we're setting var this item to blank. We're resetting the form. We're doing some other things that I'll get into in the next videos, and then we're navigating back to the main screen. If we hit submit, we're just submitting the form. Let's look at the form here really quick. And on the on success of the form, this is where you want to have the navigation happen, right? You on the success of the form, then you navigate back to the main screen. We could add comments in here. We could add a success bar and give them some feedback. I didn't need to do that for this use case. Let's go back and hit cancel and home. And you notice that in the cancel button, we're setting var this item to blank. When we select any of the items in our gallery, let me play the app again, you'll notice as I move my mouse down, we get the visual indication going from a mouse pointer to a finger showing that there's something to click there. How did I accomplish that? I leveraged a button on top of the gallery items to give us that user experience. And when I click that button, I'm actually calling the arrow that you see in the app. Now, if we scroll down, the next arrow here, that's where we're setting the var this item. So on the cancel button, we're clearing this out because that cancel button works for both the new and the edit, remember? So we're clearing out, we're setting var this item to this item. We're capturing this record from my SharePoint database. We're setting the var form mode to edit because from the gallery, we want to edit records. And then where are we navigating? To that same screen details. Now, I didn't want to recreate all of this code, so I just have the button calling the icon. It calls the arrow. This is also, if we look at it, a modern button. I have no text in there, no icon in there. If we scroll down, the position is zero for X, zero for Y. Let's look at the width. This is where you have to be careful on your code. You want it to dynamically fill the space, but you want it to dynamically fill the space for the gallery items. So the width is parent.template width and the height is parent.template height. There you get a little bit more user-friendly functionality with the modern buttons. Now let's get into some of the gotchas and some of the coolness that have come about this week with modern controls. Let's start with the bad news first. And I did a whole nother video on this, so you can go back and look at that. But if you have a button and you want the display mode of the button, to be um, disabled if there are no changes and edit mode, which is blue like you see here, if there are changes, modern forms aren't gonna work for you. You see here how I have the code, I've done nothing to this form and still the submit button is in a edit mode. Watch my other video, I get into the weeds on that. Now let's get into the really good. Because the modern controls are still in preview, Microsoft is making changes to them. And just this week, the biggest, best change that I can think of happened. If we look at the app and we play it here, I'm gonna hit the Alt key on my keyboard and select a date. We no longer have to hit okay to select our date. You'll see here how I can select the date and it accepts it. The other nice thing is look at this one here. I'm gonna select the 17th. You can change the default format on the dates. So this one I have set to a format of month, month, day, day, year, year, you see it here. And on this one, we have the option for long abbreviated. I'll do a whole nother video on this coming up soon, but I wanted to work on cap X first. So at the time of this recording, modern controls, there's some bugginess, but they're always making updates to it. It's really exciting. That's it for part two of our CapEx app review. We've covered the modern tabs, we've covered the modern form, how you can leverage a single screen for multiple purposes, how we can leverage modern buttons to give us the user feedback to let them know where to click, and we've gone over some of the good, the bad, and the latest news on modern controls. In our next video in the series, make sure you hit subscribe. We're going to cover the expense details, and let's play the app. We're going to cover how you can create this Excel-like grid functionality where you can add new rows and delete them right in the app. It makes your app so much better for your end users. We've already covered attachments in a previous video, but I'm also going to cover how we can do a modern um, pop-up so people confirm things before they delete them. And then we'll go into approvals as well. Remember, if you're a member of my YouTube channel, you can download all the working files from this as well. Happy coding. If you found this tutorial helpful, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below. 
Let us know your thoughts, questions, and any topics you'd like us to cover in future videos. Sharing is caring, so don't forget to share this tutorial with your fellow Power Apps enthusiasts. Until next time, keep learning, keep exploring, and keep rocking Power Apps like a true pro. See you in the next video.